Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having an awesome day today. For this week's video, we've got something fun lined up. We're gonna talk about five or six different guitar models that I think every person should have in their arsenal or at least check out before they buy. Let's get started. So the purpose of this video is twofold. First of all, if you're someone like me who loves guitars, loves to collect with them, loves to play on them, loves to record with them, loves to jam with other people, just loves guitars straight up, these are five or six models that I think are essential to anybody's collection. And secondly, if you're more of a new player and you're not sure what kind of guitar you want, or you're just kind of defaulting to, well, my guitar hero plays this one, so I really need this model, uh, these are some ones you should try out before you buy because these are absolute classics. Now, guitar number one on my list, nobody's surprise, is the Stratocaster, the best-selling electric guitar of all time, and for good reason. So what's so great about the Strat and why should everybody have one in their collection? Well, first of all, it's the perfect convergence of, first of all, price, versatility, playability, and comfort. All of these things converge into this one amazing guitar. Combine those factors with this guitar's incredibly rich history and nearly unparalleled number of users and you've got yourself a proven winner. Even beyond that, you've got aftermarket support for this instrument that is unlike any other guitar on the planet. Any part you want to mix and match, you can do it. There's so many different aftermarket parts that you can customize this guitar to your liking without any trouble at all. Offered from the factory in multiple pickup configurations means you can play any genre you can dream of on a Strat. And the fact that they're offered in every single price tier from the bullets and affinities all the way up to select and custom shop stuff means there's something for everybody. So no excuses across price range or pickup configurations. You definitely need this classic in your collection. Iconic guitar number two, you know it had to be the first solid body guitar ever mass produced, the Tele. So why does the Tele make my must-have guitar list? Why do I think every guitar should have one in their collection? And if you're just going out to try guitars, why I think you should definitely stop and pick up a Tele. Well, first of all is certainly the tone. There's something about the bridge pickup on a Telecaster that is pure rock and roll. And even though it's sort of been pigeonholed to country and rockabilly and clean tones, the bridge pickup of a Telecaster is like early Led Zeppelin classic rock. Um, full bodied, much fuller than a Stratocaster, and it has that attack that a Strat just can't have. And that's the difference between a trem system and a fixed bridge. So if you need that bite, that attack, that full bodied bridge pickup, um, or you just love single coil tones, you owe it to yourself to try out a Tele. Secondly, like the Strat, there is a Telecaster in everybody's price range. Right from, you know, the Affinity to the Classic Vibe to the Mexican made ones, this is a Baja Telecaster. Great value for a 52 style Tele. Four way switch, so it gives you like a full humbucker, big jazzy sound. Beautiful out of a Tele. Um, all the way up to, again, custom shop. So there's something in everybody's budget, so there's no excuses. So you're not the biggest fan of single coil pickups. Well, that's still no excuse to avoid the Telecaster. Any of the 70s Tele's have humbuckers in them, and there's even Tele's with Filtertrons, and again, that goes all the way from Squire all the way up. Have you always dreamt about a double bound Telecaster body with gold hardware, humbucker in the bridge with a P90 in the neck, flame maple fingerboard with locking tuners? Well, dream no more, just build it. It's amazing, again, aftermarket support, while not as insane as the Stratocaster, is still amazing. So if you can dream it, you can build it. That's the beauty of having aftermarket parts. So a ton of different tonal options, definitely need a Tele in your collection. And of course, guitar number three and completing the vintage trifecta is the Les Paul. And if you're new to guitar, it sounds a little something like this. So 
why do I think that every guitar player should have a Les Paul? Well, first of all, it's the history of the instrument and the tone. Now, the history, along with the Strat and the Tele, these early 50s instruments really are the foundation for all the music we listen to and enjoy today. So to have a little bit of that history is really, really cool. And secondly, the tone, there's something special about the fullness, the creaminess, just that liquid lead tone that you can get out of that neck humbucker and the bite and classic rock of the bridge. So these tones we know and love, we've heard them many times, so to have that on a guitar is really cool. Now when it comes to Gibson, there's certainly a few deterrents for the average player. Number one would certainly be price. If you wanna see Gibson on that headstock, you're gonna pay for it. They're super duper expensive. Now, unlike the Strat and the Tele, if you wanna see Fender on that headstock and you don't wanna see Squire for whatever reason, uh, there's tons of options from their made in Mexico plant. Gibson doesn't have that, American made, and you pay for it. And secondly is issues of playability. So if you're a new player and you've never played one, I wouldn't really recommend ordering one sight unseen. You need to go play it and feel how it is to play because it's not necessarily a modern player's guitar. They tend to be quite heavy. Uh, they don't balance on your lap particularly well and getting to the upper frets can be awkward. So there's a few issues that you don't necessarily find on the strats and tellies. So be aware, but I think if you're, you know, you love the history of instruments and you want the classic tone, the Les Paul needs to be part of your collection. Now, if you don't care if it says Gibson on the headstock, well, the world's your oyster. Almost every company makes a single cut Les Paul style guitar. That's how popular they are. So makers like Ibanez and ESP LTD, certainly Epiphone. That's of course a licensed copy. We can't overlook Epiphone. So again, if you don't care if it has the Gibson headstock and the logo and everything, Epiphone is an amazing bet, great value for money, and like I said, it's the licensed copy, so it's nearly identical. I've done some comparisons, uh, I'll link to it above if I can. Uh, sounds so close, you would never notice. And of course, this baby, which is the D'Angelico Atlantic, it's thinner, it's lighter, has an awesome heel joint, has a tummy cut, locking tuners, uh, Seymour Duncan 59s, like gets you all the way there, but with way more comfort. Iconic guitar number four that everybody should have in their collection is the 335. Now there's something really cool about a semi-hollow guitar that really makes you approach the instrument and play a little bit different when you pick it up. And that's really the hallmark of an iconic instrument. It really makes you change the way you play and approach music. And that's why I think each one of these guitars is so unique in its own way that you're not going to play the same on each one. And it's really going to inspire you to pick up an instrument when you have some classic choices. And they don't have to be expensive. This one's the Epiphone version and definitely has some differences over a stock 335. Now other than the aesthetic changes, most notably this guitar does not have the F holes. So BB King found that when you take your Fender Twin and just dime all the controls, he unsurprisingly had a lot of feedback problems. So he ditched the F holes in an effort to mitigate that, but it's still, you know, constructed semi-hollow. Now a semi-hollow guitar really plays so different than a solid body guitar that it should be on your short list if you do not have one. So really nice light body, double cutaway helps you get right to the highest frets with relative ease. Um, I find it easier than a Les Paul for sure. Um, lighter, like I said, nice thin body. Um, it sits on your lap great. No hands, no neck dive, it just sits where it's supposed to. I don't know if you guys can see that, but anyway, uh, really balances quite nice and is a beautiful, beautiful playing experience. Now the tonal difference between a guitar like this and a similarly spec Les Paul is not actually as big as you might think. They sound very, very similar. I find that this guitar has a slightly fewer mid frequencies, so a little bit of a scooped profile, lots of treble, lots of bass, fewer mids. And on the Les Paul, you get lots of mids, lots of kind of crunchy bite. And this one, not so much. All right, you guys, we're down to our final pick. So far, we've got the Strat, the Tele, the Les Paul, and a semi-hollow or hollow body. And with the addition of this final instrument, you guys will be able to cover any genre possible and cover any tone. My final recommendation is Ibanez.
uh, Ibanez really offers a playing experience unlike any of the other guitars on our list. So you add these babies into the mix with, you know, Strat, Tele, Les Paul, and Semi Hollow, and you're going to be able to cover everything. So Ibanez really has a like a superlative playing experience. There's nothing like it, especially if you're in the Prestige series, although they offer, like Fender, everything all the way down to like 150 bucks, 100 bucks, like some amazing value guitars. And I think they've really overtaken Fender, at least in my opinion, of like supreme quality control all the way down their line. Like they've done an amazing job. But the S series is my personal favorite um, because of this. It is absolutely insane. It's so thin, it's so light. It, like if it's five pounds, I would be surprised. You can hang this on your neck all night and barely feel it. And of course the neck, the fretwork, everything is amazing. Now tonally, the Ibanez offers its own unique experience. So unlike the Strat, the Tele, the Les Paul, some of these vintage spec instruments, some of the, the pickups can be like really bright and brash and really rough around the edges, which is why we like them. It kind of gives the, the music some energy. But if you need to play a part or you're covering a song that has something a little bit more controlled, the Ibanez really is the ticket. It's a very smooth and controlled sound that never really gets too wild. Now the playing experience on an Ibanez is really what makes it an icon. It's really so different than all the other guitars I mentioned before. Usually really flat fingerboards, jumbo frets, and thin neck profiles are, you know, the hallmarks of Ibanez, really makes you play in different ways, which is cool. And of course, this one has a locking trim system, so you can literally grab the bar, support the whole weight of the guitar, whammy it around, and it's going to be in tune. So really unique playing uh, techniques that can be available on an Ibanez. So let me know in the comments below if I missed any of your favorite classic guitars that you think should be on the list that everybody should check out. I mean, I played exclusively on Music Man for like a decade. Maybe that should be on the list. Anyway, there's tons of awesome classic guitars. So if you think I missed one of your favorites, let me know in the comments below. That'd be awesome. So these are my top picks for iconic guitars that should be in everybody's collection. And if you're just starting out playing, I would suggest trying out each one of these models. Even if you're like, I'm definitely not a Les Paul guy, or I'm definitely not an Ibanez or Tele guy or whatever. Um, spend some time with each one of these models before you decide, you might be surprised. Thanks so much for watching you guys. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking right here. The rest of my information will be on the screen or in the video description below. You can check out the tab store, grab a Tele t-shirt if you're so inclined. Other than that, have yourself an awesome week. We'll see you next time.